Y'all want to sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game? Yeah. Okay, Charlie, you too? Yes, okay, you too. Okay. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. For it's one, two, three. Three strikes are out of the old ball game. Okay, Callie, where are your, get your shoes. Okay, come on, Charlie, let's get your shoes too. Oh, and we need your jersey. Need my jersey. Okay, let's go. We're gonna finish getting ready in here. So it's about five o'clock. Clayton start day is today. We've kind of done our whole normal start day routine with Clayton. He left probably one o'clock today. Now we're just kind of getting ready. So y'all are seeing like the flurry of us trying to get out of the house. All right, Char, you want to sit in your chair and we'll put your shoes on? And Charlie, today, when you throw out the first pitch, are you going to throw it super hard or are you yeah. going to throw it super soft? Harder. Super hard? Yeah. Yeah? Are you going to throw it all the way to home plate? Yeah. Yeah? Callie, who's going to catch you today? Yeah. Mr. Jock? Yeah? No, my dad will pitch. Because your dad is pitching today, right? Yeah. Otherwise, he would catch you. You know, kiddos has kind of mellowed out the whole start day routine, but you know, in the mornings I usually try and, you know, just be pretty hands on. You know, I love playing with the kiddos and that's kind of my time in the morning to wake up and hang out with them before I go to the field. So now what we have to find, Charlie, is your hat. My hat. Oh, wait, am I gonna wear my jersey? Yeah. Yay! That'd be so fun. Yes. yes. You and Charlie get to match. Oh my jersey. So here's the misinterpretation about Clayton. Yes, I think when he gets to the stadium, 100% I would not want to go like within a five feet radius of him. When he's home though before, he actually is really normal. Who wears their jersey open like that? Dada! You know, start days I try and be a little more chill, obviously, try and conserve some energy, and Ellen's great about taking the brunt of that on. Um, Cal, you want to find your glove to take? I don't need a glove. Okay. It's okay if I just have a hand. Pre-kids, he was able to kind of be in his like zone from minute one of the day. But now that we have kids, that's kind of that option's off the table because he wakes up and they could care less if he is pitching that day in the World Series or if it is regular old Tuesday. You know, they in the jersey now? just know that he's dad and he is supposed to play with him. What number is Dada? 22. 22. That's right. So cute. You want me to button one button? No, leave it open. Okay. We went swimming this morning. Clayton, he got his coffee. He eats the same breakfast every start date. So that's kind of my responsibility. There's very little in my control on start day, but what I can make sure of is that there are bananas, the cereal he likes, the milk he likes, and he doesn't expect that from me, but I feel like this is kind of the one little thing that I can control, and so I try to. We've got Raisin Bran, Cheerios, um, Honey Bunches of Oats, Golden Grahams are a staple. He loves Golden Grahams, that goes in every single bowl. We've gotta have those, so it is now time to refill that. And it's like um, a mixing bowl, size of cereal. He just puts all of it in and mixes it around, usually has two of them, and that's his game day routine. Because he can have it in any city he goes to, room service will always offer cereal. I've now known Clayton for 15 or 16 years. And before we had kids, I thought that there's nothing I didn't know about him or I couldn't know any better. And yet I feel like I've literally seen and gotten to know this entirely different side of him. Being a dad's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. You know, I think when you go, go into it and start wondering, you know, starting a family of your own and trying to do the baseball thing, it seems a little bit overwhelming to say the least but it's been the best. And obviously having a great wife helps with that and Ellen's been unbelievable. And your batting gloves, you wanna put them on? The attitude that she has, the enthusiasm that she has, she's so positive, literally smiling at all times. And uh, it's just, uh, 
it's just awesome to be around. The Kershaw's bond with children began before they had their own. After Clayton was drafted by the Dodgers, Ellen started participating on African mission trips to assist children in need. Her experiences there were life-changing. In particular, a meeting with an orphan named Hope. So I met Hope actually my fourth year that I had been going to Zambia. And there was something that was so different about her. We connected instantly from the very first day. She was homeless. She was living on the streets by herself. She was HIV positive. She had a wound on her leg that was about a foot long that just wasn't healing. Um, and the HIV made it impossible for it to heal. It was so evident that without our help, Hope would not be able to survive in the conditions that she was in. So while I was there, I called Clayton. You know, we, we kind of said like, hey, let's not call unless it's something urgent, you know, and she just said, we need to help this girl. Without a blink of an eye, Clayton said, anything this girl needs, let's do it. Let's sponsor her. Let's make sure she gets the food that she needs, the medical attention that she needs. And we're going to we're going to change this life for this girl. <laughs> And Clayton actually got to go back about six months later after we had gotten married and meet Hope for himself the first time. This is why I live in Zambia. Where does Aunt Ellen and Uncle Clayton live? Uh, America. Where is America? In 2011, Clayton and Ellen started a charity organization named Kershaw's Challenge and partnered with Arise Africa to fund the construction of an orphanage for Hope to call home. In addition to their efforts in Africa, Kershaw's Challenge serves at-risk children in the Dominican Republic and the United States, and the experiences have also made a lasting impact on Clayton. Who is that? Yeah, he sees himself. You know, these kids are the most affectionate in the entire world. They, they crawled on him as if he was a jungle gym. He would sit down in the middle of the compound, and before we even knew it, there was probably 20 kids trying to vie for his attention and crawling onto his lap. And, you know, that has always been my love language, but that necessarily wasn't the most comfortable way for, for Clayton. And it's almost like you were forced into that role because these kids desperately needed affection. And so um, it was really cool because it probably was the first time I got to see this paternal side of Clayton come out where you just, you had to love these kids with all that you had because you saw how desperately they were in need of it. I think just the, the how organic it was when it started to, to where it is today is just something that Ellen and I obviously never expected. We never expected to get to be a part of that and just, just really cool. I mean, it really is to see what baseball can do, the platform that it can create to raise a lot of money for some awesome, awesome causes. And Hope was the starting point of that. Charlie, which one's this? Home base. Home base. Does that one go right there? Yeah. Clayton's paternal side is something Ellen now sees every day with her own two children. I need a bear bow and her stuff. And I still need some more stuff. So Callie is our daughter. She is four and a half years old. She is the goofiest personality. She loves to be the bossy big sister to Charlie. Bubba, Bubba, watch. What is And Charlie is all boy. Charlie is two and a half years old. And if his world could revolve around a baseball, I think it would. It's pretty funny because I feel like I got to know Clayton at 14 years old and on, and I feel like I'm kind of getting to experience the first 14 years that I missed of Clayton's life. I think that Charlie has to be what Clayton was as a two-year-old. Y'all ready? It's funny because you, you know, every dad, right, is just so proud of their kids, and you're like, all right, come on, dad. Like, they're all, like, we all love our kids. I get it. Like, we don't need to hear it. But it's like, it just, you just swell with pride for them. Like, it's just, 
It's just something that you don't anticipate and you can't really explain to people that aren't dads yet. Hey guys, if they ask y'all to sing It's Time for Dodger Base, to say It's Time for Dodger Baseball on the microphone, can you practice saying it? Time for Dodger Baseball! Yeah, good job, Charlie.